Coach, if you could give us an opening statement and then we'll go to questions for your student athletes. Sure, thank you. First of all, it's wonderful to see everybody here. Um, the last time I was here at the Final Four, uh, I, was, I had a microphone in front of me and nobody in the room. And, uh, and I could uh, blabber on and, and uh, make mistakes thinking, oh, we can, this is being pre-recorded right now. This is live. So now I know it's live because I can see all your faces. Um, what an incredible setting, right? You know, uh, Philadelphia does an amazing job hosting this event. And what a, what a, what a venue here at the Lincoln Financial. Um, we were obviously hoping for the storybook ending to uh, the, the careers, especially the fifth year men. Um, we have six of them who, who were here in 2019 in Philadelphia and won the national championship. Um, a team that found ways to always win in overtime. And uh, by the, obviously the closest of margins when you win five games in 2019 in overtime. And, and this year uh, we lost both of our overtime games. And you know, what a, with a, a minuscule of difference there. Um, but as we all know, the huge range of emotions, a very different range of emotions being on the losing end. Um, what, a, what a great lacrosse game. And, uh, you know, fantastic opponent, um, athletes all over the field, a great goalie. But I want to tell the, the, the media and the lacrosse world, uh, I think there's three times uh, Matt Noons uh, in his games against Notre Dame um, showed to make more saves and, uh, and to win the matchup, if there is such a thing, you know, goalie versus goalie. Um, our team defense certainly exposed at the end, but I don't know if we played great team defense all game. How many times... Did, did the, all of us see a Notre Dame shooter really close and it looked like it was about to go in, you know, too close. And, whoa, it didn't go in. There's Matt Nunes with another save. And um, he's the one, he's the reason we had uh, that one or two goal lead uh, later in the game because he just wouldn't let the ball in and, uh, as the game went on. And so a fantastic performance there. Um, special credit to Cole Kastner. Uh, with Scott Bauer uh, going down with injury and not playing in the second half, we needed more from Cole, and uh, Cole was playing not only an elite attackman, but also bumping up to play long stick midfield and taking faceoff wings, which we haven't asked of him to do this year. Um, also, Grayson Soliday. Grayson Soliday, you know, heroic effort. We asked him to play more as Jeff Connor cramped up and didn't play as much in the second half. And so a couple men who, um, despite the loss, you know, I couldn't be more grateful and, you know, uh, you know certainly honored. To, to coach those type of men, as well as all the men of Virginia. Um, yeah, what a heck of a game. I'll stop there. Uh, hey, guys. Mike Barber from Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, Matt, it, they've had uh, scored you guys 4-1 to one over the final three minutes in the overtime, and their shots uh, coming out of the timeouts were pretty quick. Um, what did you see defensively in front of you as they were getting those early shots out of those timeouts? I mean, uh, Notre Dame's super talented team. Both the Kavanaugh brothers are great players. Eric Dobson, and I mean, that list can go on. Jack Simmons, um, just super talented offensive players. And I mean, we have super talented defensive players too. They just ended up getting a little bit of a step, but I think I could have probably helped out our team a little bit more there in the last couple of minutes. But I mean, all credit goes to Notre Dame for drawing up those plays and um, getting good looks off. I think the one that really, it came out of the timeout, we were up two. And Dobson swept across the middle, and he hit Kavanaugh sneaking from behind the goal. Um, it's, a, it's a great look he made. And it's something that is exposed against our defense because we were ready to slide to Dobson and then second slide from our lowest defender into Jake Taylor because he's such a threat. And um, you know, if Notre Dame wants to make that you know, really heroic feed, it's there, and they made it. And that got, us, that got them within one. And I'll admit, as a defense, now we're like, ooh, all right, if we keep sliding, we might get exposed to those pipes. And, um, and, and they were able to take advantage from there. Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Xander, you're part of the fifth year group that Coach mentioned. What, what were your emotions when you realized the game was over and your college career was over? Yeah, definitely, I think every guy Specifically, the fifth years, but every guy on this roster was was sort of flooded and almost shocked. Like when we realized it was over and our, our journey was finally done, because it's we thought it might be done last year, but we kept it going and, and everyone wanted to come back. There was no question, everyone wanted to come back to Virginia because the place is special and the program is special. Um, my first reaction was to go to Connor Schellenberger. Um, just having a chance to play alongside him at Attack this year was something I, I couldn't have dreamed of. Um, probably the most special player I'll ever play with. Um, 
I think all the fifth years are just grateful for the opportunity to return and, and give it our best shot one more time. But I think we're going to miss it a lot for sure. Uh, Patrick Stevens with Lax Mag Matt, the, the th three goals that they had coming out of those timeouts late in the game and, and in overtime, I think it took them 14 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds. Just what, how, how quick did that kind of unfold in your eyes, just how quickly they were attacking, and, and what sort of you know, challenges does that present when a team comes right at you coming out of a timeout like that when they're that prepared? Yeah, I mean, when two of the best teams in the country are competing at a high level, you can't ever take your foot off the gas, and they kept their foot on the gas, and if that was either 10 seconds or they were 60 seconds into possession, you always could feel, you always felt their pressure. I mean, as I said, just super talented team that we were playing on the other side. So, I mean, all credit goes to them, and if they got those looks in the first 10 seconds or the last four, 10 seconds of possession, they just kind of kept applying the pressure. But, I mean, my defense, again, did just a great job. Grayson Sout, I know Chismar, the short stick D middies really did a great job. And, I mean, n enough, I mean, Cade, not, not enough can be said about Cade Sawside, so. I, you know, I, I'm not happy with the way I guided the defense at the end of the game. But I don't want to take credit away from Notre Dame. I think about the two goals, one by Dobson and the other by Jake Taylor. I mean, they got us sliding and we slid to them. And uh, we made contact. And yet Taylor does that little twister action and Dobson gets pounded by a couple guys and still gets that ball to the far pipe. Those are, those are, really, those are two great plays too. But yeah, I, I didn't do my job at the end as a defensive coach because you're right, giving up goals that quickly, you know, it's, uh, it's on me. Zach Carey streaking the line. Uh, Matthew, obviously the result wasn't what you wanted, but with two years left, 17 saves in the final four, do you feel like this game and this season can be a building block for you moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it, we're going to take this. I mean, we took it on the, we're taking it on the chin right now, but we're losing one hell of a fifth year class. We're losing a lot of fourth years. We're losing a lot of guys who their names don't get mentioned in the paper. Andrew Bremfleck, David Roselle, just you could get, that list can go on and on. and. My grade, the first years have really talked about just how special that those guys who are leaving us, and we got to continue their legacy and build upon their legacy that they've left. They've left this place way better than they found it. They left it with two national championships. I forget, I don't even know how many ACC titles, but they turned everything about this program around, and is they're the reason why I'm at this place. Yeah, Xander, just going off of that, um, when you guys got here to UVA, it obviously wasn't the program it is right now with you know the two national championships. Just what does it mean just kind of when you do get a chance to reflect back on what these past five years have been? It's been everything for every guy on this team knows. We eat, sleep, breathe Virginia lacrosse, and it starts with the coaches and then our leadership and all the way down. Everyone is so bought in day in and day out, so committed. It is such a special thing to be a part of. and. We view ourselves as just cogs in the machine of the program. And like Matt mentioned, and you saw it today, there's a lot of young guys stepped up. Patrick McIntosh, a lot of points, great player, hell of a day today. Um, I, I'm just happy that we were able to sort of be mentioned as a class that helped shape this program and helped, helped it sort of lead it where it's going in the future. And we know there's great things coming. And we're definitely pretty distraught that we didn't get to finish off with the national title this year. But just to be able to say I helped out a little bit and, and I guided this program and, and where it's headed in the future is something really special and something we hold very valuable to us. Yeah. Oh, it's over overused line, but we, we love it. You know, leave the program better than you found it, and essentially that's what Xander's saying. You know, it's uh, it's it hurts, it really hurts. But because it it hurts because one this absolute all in commitment this group's had. You know, uh, you know the the agenda items I haven't had to worry about off the field, done n nothing, and uh, how much they poured their hearts into it. And it also it hurts because we have reached the pinnacle, and. Um, and and though we leave you know with a loss, it's um, the, this group has really truly left the program better than when they, what they found four or five years ago. Xander, I know it's tough to talk about right after the loss, but as you think about this season, um, how would you characterize it? Has it been a successful season to obviously get to this point? I think that's the twofold question. I think no, because we, we didn't win a national championship, and that's just the standard we've created and. We're not trying to be arrogant about that, but that's what we want, a national title. This is Virginia lacrosse. This is the best of the best of Blue Bloods. We want a national title. So in that essence, yes, we, we didn't reach our goal, but definitely not a failure now in the term, in the idea that we had so much fun along the way, and it was such a crazy ride. And day in and day out, guys were smiling every day. And we, it was interesting, like when we got into playoffs, it almost seemed like 
you'd imagine that we got way more serious, way more, way more in depth at what we're doing in our schemes, but it was actually the opposite. And we think that's because we worked so hard that the year and everyone individually as a team, schematically coaches, every part of this program is working so hard day in and day out. And when we get to spots like this, it's like, all right, let's breathe. Let's, let's fall back on what we've done all year. And guys were just smiling. I remember the weight room right before we came here was just full of smile and laughter. Guys were putting the work, but guys are just excited to be a part of this and excited to get to spend more time together. And that's why we want to win these games. It's just honestly, we get more time with each other and it's a really, really fun group. All right, we'd like to release the student athletes and let them go back to be with their teammates and coach will do a couple more questions for you. Great. Lars, you <coughs> have been, become so. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. You've become so accustomed to having an edge in possession, I think, most games. How much did Notre Dame's success on faceoffs kind of skew the game in their favor? You're right. We've, we've, uh, we've, we've, you're right. We have grown accustomed to having an unfair advantage at the faceoff X with Petey LaSala for uh, five years now. And, um, you know, so you got to give credit certainly to uh, Lynch, number 22, especially what he was able to do. Um, he was able to counter PD and, and disrupt it and make it a 3v3 ground ball. And, and, you know, certainly we can all see the stats. Notre Dame earned a lot of extra possessions off the ground. And, uh, um, yeah, and it looked like it was pretty balanced throughout. But then that fourth quarter, that's where those extra couple, you know, like, man, if we can just get one more of these. And, and we finally did when we were and the game was tied. And we, I think we, they finally called a face-off violation against Lynch for holding Petey. And uh, Petey, we got down and score the goal. But yeah, just I know Petey's um, someone who's um, unique, you know, scoring that big goal in the fourth quarter, you know. And uh, um, as a coaching staff, right before he dodged, I'm like, I don't know, I think Lynch is a pretty good defender. I'm not sure this is a this isn't a typical face off guy, you know, who's not a not a great athlete and I'm not sure Petey should go and he goes and he scores. And uh um so we 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 would not have won the national championships in nineteen and twenty one without Petey Lasala. And um and I bring that up because I know right now Petey's you know, I just talked to him, he's he's disappointed in himself that he couldn't get those, you know, one or two more possessions late in the game to uh, to get us the ball, to get us the the overtime face off, and to get us a shot to win that game. And and um, but it's like Petey, Petey, we're not going to define your, you know, based on a couple face offs. I mean, you've already broken the NCAA face off <laughs> attempts record, and uh, you've, you've you've been incredible for us. And uh, but yeah, I, yeah, when you get accustomed to the unfair advantage, it gets you, you do feel it when it's not going your way. Lars, you said something interesting the other day when you said that um, it kind of struck you that Connor had like the nerve to say it's, it's kind of national championship or bust. I was curious in, in that answer and in this moment now, um, do you worry about a program and guys who feel like it's got to be that um, when you come up just one win, you know, away from that game? Sure. No, you're right. Because if we define life based on national championship or bust, that that's a bit daunting, isn't it? When you know in the NBA only one out of 32 teams, or you know in the NFL wins the Super Bowl or the NBA Finals, I, I hope the rest of the athletes and teams don't think look at the season as a failure. Um, it certainly does right now because we have these expectations and we've built this up this program to the where it is. And the, the men who were next to me and in that locker room had a lot to do with that. But I, um, yeah, I, your your questions are really poignant one because we want to make sure that our men know that um, this season wasn't a failure. It feels like a failure right now, temporarily, but uh, man, we had a lot of fun this year. We, uh, we scored a bunch of goals. We you know, you know, broke the UVA record for assists, so we're sharing it. We're being unselfish, and, um, and we got to come back here. You know, the Final Four is such a magical place. We missed it last year, and man, that was, that, that was a season that felt unfruitful that felt just that was disappointing but um but yeah and it, i'm glad you brought it up because it, it'll uh, something i'll go reinforce with the men that uh you know as much as it hurts right now this was a successful year lars you've had you've gotten to this point with guys like malloy and yeah. guys like connor a couple years ago where it, watching them it felt like they were just going to carry a team all the way and obviously with malloy it, the injury kind of played a role there sure. When you're in the middle of this game and, and Connor is doing what he's doing like he has the last two weeks, the last month or so, does it feel like 
he's just going to carry us to another one here, it, one, way, one way or the other. It does. I know it's so nice to have him fully, you know, back to just about 100% health-wise. And he fought things right from the first scrimmage, you know, uh, the second scrimmage, we were, excuse me, when we were scrimmage Georgetown. And he tweaked something there and it just wasn't right. And, boy, yeah, at Georgetown to see him doing what he's doing. And now today, today yeah, that's a special player. And it's, you, you certainly feel like you've got that edge. You really do. Um, Connor Schellenberger, um, yeah, I mean, what he does, and today he really found that perfect balance, I thought, because we you can't have him just be a feeder. And, uh, and we all know he's not too selfish. We want him to be more selfish. And he found, he's, all right, I'm going to the goal. And uh, a, a great cover guy on him. And uh, I guess a great goalie, but Connor found a way to get those three goals. So, yeah, he's, um, I know, I'm saying goodbye to a lot of incredible players. I'm thankfully not, he's not one of them. As, uh, you know, and truly, he didn't actually get the COVID year. We had redshirted him that year. <laughs> and so he's, uh, he's only has, tr he'll truly have four years of uh, playing time for Virginia lacrosse statistically and everything he's done. But yeah, with a guy like that, it's like, man, just get the ball. Just get him that ball, and uh, we're going to win this game. I just, we just didn't get him the ball enough. Lars, I'm sure that you're not surprised that it was a one-goal game, but when you look at it from the standpoint of a handful of stats specifically, Notre Dame took 49 shots. Both teams went over three on extra man. Notre Dame failed only one clear. You combined to cause just 15 turnovers. I'm sure that when you envisioned the game, it unfolded in a number of different ways. How surprised are you by how this game unfolded? Yeah, I, our offense has been fantastic with extra possessions. Uh, something we we did really well for most of the year, and so we started riding it. Let's take pride in this. Look at all these extra possessions we get. Yeah, we're super talented, but you know sometimes it was a second or third time you know when the ball went on the ground. Notre Dame wouldn't let us do that today. Th that defensive end, they were they were absorbing and vacuuming up all those. It felt like the entire game. How many times did we get a you know? I, I felt like to get an extra possession, we had to run a shot out, you know, at points there just to get that ball. It's Overall, our team defensive slide scheme did not have a great day. Matt Noons bailed us out multiple times in that first half, and it felt like in the third quarter as well. Like, it was just like, oh boy, somebody's wide open. Oh, he made the save again. And so, it's in, yeah, when you look at the numbers and the extra shots they had, all the extra ground balls, and we were only able to get them to fail one clear, our 10 man ride, they, they dealt with it fairly well. And, um, yeah, so this, this it doesn't go, it probably didn't go the way I would have expected. I would have thought we've gotten more ground balls because we've been very good with the ground balls and we've led the nation in ground balls many years. And um, yeah, we played, we played more defense. And again, I don't know if it was, I wouldn't call it a great team defensive effort. It was, it was pretty good. But Matt Nunes made us, he, he's the one who kept that score down. In an era where the scoring is up, holy cow, watching that first game today, a lot of goals being scored. Um, so, but yeah, that's, I, I, yeah, not a, we, we're not the nation, myself, all of us. We need to talk about Matt Nunes more. <laughs> and we're really fortunate we got him for two more years. Two-part question for you. One, can you, what is your message to your fan base about your, the season you just had? And secondly, what makes the city of Philadelphia a good site to host the Final Four? Sure. Yeah, the message to the UVA lacrosse uh, family, it's, um, you know, I'm sorry. As the coach of this program, uh, I didn't get us to uh, um, get us to that land, get us to that, 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 that lonely place at the very top of the mountain. And, um, and, and that's, yes, we've built that expectation, but so did Dom Starja. And, uh, um, and so did the men of yesteryear. They built that expectation. And so I apologize that. But know that how proud and how grateful, how grateful I am for these men. And it, like... You know, my sports administrator, Kim Records over here, you know, we focus on budgets. We focus on, you know, recruiting. We're focusing on facility enhancements. We're not focusing on bad behavior. We're not focusing on things that, that waste time. This group has sacrificed so much and transformed what it means to be a, a Virginia lacrosse player, both on and off the field. It's, it's been dramatic, the change there. Um, and so I want them to know that how grateful they should be of these men, you know, the GPA, internship and job acquisition. Man, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful group of men. And that's why I'm going to miss them so much. Um, 
Philadelphia, first of all, you know, low-hanging fruit. It's just central. It's really nice, you know. And but I don't want to say that it's a great venue just because it's central. This stadium is awesome. When we ran on the field yesterday for our practice, I've been here before. I've been fortunate to be here with Brown in sixteen and Virginia in nineteen. It still took my breath away for the first ten seconds. Just it, this this coliseum, you know, with us as the gladiators inside of it. Man, I don't know if there's a better venue. It's amazing. Um, the city of Philadelphia is. Uh, it, it's got everything you'd want uh, in terms of great food and entertainment. You know, they give us the police escorts, you know, and to get into the stadium, the it's huge amount of parking for all the fans to celebrate, you know, and have their tailgates. Um, easy to get to. I, I just, but yeah, the people here, that's what it really comes down to. I think they just, we, we were saying like, and I probably shouldn't say this, but you know, baseball has an Omaha. You know, it'd be fun if lacrosse had an Omaha, you know, and uh, boy, Philadelphia, you know, it might be right at the top of the list. They just, they, they do a fantastic job with it.